We looked at PKPD of vancomycin and determined the vancomycin loading dose for critically ill patients with serious MRSA infections. Now the next learning objective is given a patient with a suspected MRSA infection, recommend IDSA guideline concordant empiric vancomycin maintenance dose and frequency. These recommendations are from the 2011 IDSA MRSA guidelines and these are intended to make recommendations more straightforward and they do not depend on uh, pharmacokinetic equations. So there are no equations involved when you recommend a vancomycin dose following these recommendations from IDSA. So basically they recommend that for IV vancomycin you can use a between 15 to 20 milligram per kilogram per dose and that's using total body weight um, as the body weight. Uh, so once you determine the dose then you determine the frequency that's typically every 8 to 12 hours in, in patients with normal renal function. And they recommend not to exceed 2 gram per dose. So if someone is obese, they recommend not to exceed 2 gram per dose in order to um, avoid the nephrotoxicity. And then they recommend to get the trough um, prior to the 4th or the 5th dose. And then once you get that uh, level after, uh, or I should say prior to the 4th or the 5th dose, they recommend uh, to a target trough of 15 to 20. So the higher end of the trough. Uh, 15 to 20 for serious infections such as bacteremia, endocarditis, osteomyelitis, meningitis, pneumonia, and severe skin and soft tissue infections such as necrotizing fasciitis. And of course, any of these as long as they are due to MRSA. And be, uh, so, you know, anytime you use the 15 to 20 milligram per kilo, uh, most hospitals uh, round to the nearest 250 milligram. So for example, if you ca calculate 300 milligram, you're going to round it to 250 milligram. Or if you, um, you know, calculated it to be 1,200 um, milligram, you round it to 1250. So, so whatever is the closest next 250 milligram. So these are, these are estimation. And then you will find out if this was the right dose or not uh, prior to the fourth or the fifth dose. Um, you know, and the reason they recommend prior to the fourth or the fifth dose, that's the closest to the steady state. So they want you to adjust the dose based on the level from steady state. Because if you do it, if you get a level too soon, it's going to be sub, sub therapeutic. So you're going to increase the dose. And then by the time level is at steady state, it will be supra therapeutic. And then the dose will be too high. And then the way you can choose the frequency is based on renal function. So in someone with excellent renal function, meaning creatine clearance greater than 90, you can actually do every eight hours. Uh, and of course, these recommendations are in adults. And then in patients with creatine clearance of 50 to 90, you can do every 12 hours because it takes longer for them to clear it. Unless if they weigh actually more than 100 kilo, then you can do every eight hours to keep those uh, daily doses smaller uh, with creatinine class 15 to 49 every 24 hours and then with uh, you know end-stage renal disease you actually want to do PRN uh, or I should say as needed dosing and what that means is that you actually give a single dose and you don't give it the frequency you just say it's as needed and you, you just check a random vancomycin level in 24 hours after the dose. And then if the level is less than 20, then you give one more dose. And then you keep doing this every day. Whereas if the next day, uh, you know, because the kidneys are not uh, clearing it, if the level is more than 20, you actually hold the dose and you repeat the random level in 12 hours. Now, this is one way of doing it. Uh, most hospitals actually have protocols on how to approach this. So you may, depending on what hospital you work at, uh, you may see a protocol that's slightly different than this. But generally speaking, uh, you know, these protocols do PRN dosing of um, vancomycin in end-stage renal disease. With dialysis, it's also PRN dosing because on certain days where dialysis is, hemodialysis is not done, on those days, uh, chances are that the level would be greater than 20 and you just hold the dose until the day that they get dialysis. And I'll explain more about hemodialysis um, in a little bit. Now, in the 2020 ASHP IDSA vancomycin guideline, basically they make the same recommendation of 15 to 20 milligram per kilo per dose using total body weight every 8 to 12 hours uh, in patients with normal renal function. Uh, and do, they do say that trough only monitoring with a target of 1520 is no longer recommended. They say that the most accurate and optimal way to manage vancomycin dosing should be 
through AUC guided dosing and monitoring, specifically targeting individualized AUC to MIC ratio of 400 to 600. And this is empirically, since we, it takes some time for MICs to come back, empirically we just assume an MIC of one because for the most part, more than 90% of MICs um, in the United States are either one or less. So it's unlikely to have MIC of higher than two. And then of course, uh, if we get the MIC of two, um, we actually uh, will not be able to achieve these uh, targets using the traditional dosing of 15 to 20 milligram. Now for the uh, monitoring, they recommend that vancomycin targeted exposure should be achieved early during the course of therapy, preferably within the first uh, one to two days. And uh, we will uh, cover more details of how to monitor uh, AUC2MIC in learning objective number seven.